Hello, this is Mr. Sarisa, and I'm here to go over the problem on page 720, number 81. Uh, someone requested that I uh, go over this one more time. I went over it in class. Um, so you can check your notes if you'd rather look at those. Um, <clears throat> but this one is the work rate problem. And so a work rate problem are pretty much always the same where you have um, one person can do a job in a certain amount of time, how long will it take for three people to do that job? So the whole idea is if one person does the job, it's going to take a long time, but if you have three people, it can cut the time down. Um, so the best way to think of these work rate problems are in terms of uh, kind of like the distance formula here. Distance equals rate times time, except for it's the work that equals the rate times the time. Um, so in this uh, case, it's going to be painting a house. So <clears throat> what we can do is um, is we have one person painting the house, and let's say Beth, and she can do this at a rate of X. Okay? So that's going to be her rate. And then we'd multiply it times some time, in order to do uh, one house. Okay, so that's what we're looking for here. They're they're telling us Beth, Bill, and, and Edie work so long, and then the question is how long should it take each person to complete such a job alone? So this is really what we're looking for is time, but if you solve the problem in terms of rate, then that will make it a lot easier for you. So, um, Bill, Beth, and Edie. And so those are going to be my X, Y, and Z. Um, and then eventually we'll figure out what the house is for each of those. And so following along, it's saying that it takes 10 hours for all three of them. Uh, all right, so... That means Beth will work 10 hours, so 10 hours times her rate, plus uh, Bill working 10 hours times his rate, and then plus Edie 10 hours times her rate. And they're going to complete one whole house that way. And so um, when you do it this way, you don't have to worry about fractions as much. Uh, and there's another way, but I'm not going to get into that because I think that might be... Uh, too confusing. And then uh, when we, uh, more information, sorry, more information will be uh, one day all three worked, oh wait, I skipped one. Bill and Edie have painted a similar house and it took them 15 hours. So it takes 15 hours for Bill and 15 hours for Edie if they work together. And so they're really individually are just part of a house, if you want to think of it that way. But it's not one-third, one-third, and one-third because they move at different rates. Um, just like when Bill and Edie work together, they didn't individually uh, do half, the, half of it. They um, did whatever portion they ended up with. Okay, and then the final setup is saying um, one day all three worked the same house for four hours... And so you might be tempted, oh, I'll just do 4x plus 4y plus 4z equals the 1. Uh, except for then they change it around and say, oh, Edie left after 4 hours. And then Beth and Bill finished the job in 8 more hours. So instead of 4, we have 12. And then same thing here. Instead of 4, we have 12. And so these are the three um, equations that we need to solve the problem. Uh, and then there's multiple ways that we could solve this. Um, one way that actually would probably be pretty quick is if we try to get rid of these x and y's at the same time, we could use the first and third one and uh, get rid of both and just find out what z is. That kind of seems like it might be the quickest way about it. Um, so I don't need to multiply the top by 12 and the bottom by um, 10 because they have a, um, a 
least common multiple of 60. So if I multiply the first one uh, by uh, 5 and the second one by, or sorry, the first one by 6 and the third one by negative 5, then we'll be able to get there um, a little bit faster and easier. So I'm going to multiply by 6 and I get 60x plus 60y plus 60z and then that equals 6 and then the last one I multiply by negative 5 so I'll have negative 60x minus 60y and then um, multiply it by negative 6 so negative 24 z equals negative 5 oops sorry about that I forgot I was multiplying by 5 so negative 20 z equals the negative 5. We add these up and these x's and y's disappear as I promised they would. And then we have 40z equals 1. And so we have z equaling 1 40th. Okay, so let's go back to our, our table that we had. And we had z equals 1 40th, which really means the time is 40 hours. So if Edie works all by herself, then I'll take her 40 hours to do a job. Um, all right, so now that we know z, I'll just plug z into the one above it, and then we'll solve for y. And so we have... Um, here, let me change the colors, see if that helps. Uh, 15y plus 15z, which is 1 over 40, equals 1. And then we simplify this, so 5 goes in 3 times, 5 goes in 8 times. And so that's 3 eighths, so I'm going to subtract 3 eighths here. And I have 15y equals 5 eighths. I'll divide by 15 or multiply by 1 15th, so 5, 3, and I end up with y equaling 1 over 24. And so now that we know y equals 1 over 24, it'll take 24 hours for Bill. And then finally, you can um, plug the uh, x and or sorry the z and the y in to the first equation and solve for x so we'll have 10x plus 10 times 1 24th plus 10 times 1 over 40 and that equals 1 and then start doing some nice easy math here so 5 twelfths, and then 1 and 4. So what I'm going to do though is just to get the common denominator, make it a little easier, I'm going to turn the 1 fourth into 3 twelfths. And that way we have 5 twelfths and 3 twelfths, which is 8 twelfths, or better yet, 2 thirds. Okay, so I subtract two-thirds on both sides so that they cancel, and I have 10x equals one-third. I divide by 10, and x equals 1 over 30. And so I have x equaling 1 over 30, which means... The time will be 30 hours. Okay, I hope that this helped. Thank you very much.